Hi everyone, so today I want to talk to you about B12. You know, it's a very controversial subject and it always comes up when you say you're a vegan. And the thing that sort of gets me is when people say, oh, I, I had to go back to eating animals because I was B12 deficient. And it's like, well, did veganism give you that B12 deficiency or did you already have the deficiency? You know, we need to have a test from when the individual was eating meat to when they were eating vegan. So then we can make comparisons. But not one individual has been able to show me these comparisons. Because the thing is, when you say you're a vegan, doctors jump on you straight away with a B12 test. But if you say you eat meat, then a B12 test doesn't even come into it. And for this reason, a lot of deficiencies go unnoticed. It has become an epidemic in society. So vitamin B12 is a water soluble vitamin. It's a bacterium found in soil and it's essential for the formation of red blood cells and in the health of our nerve tissue. So it's a very important vitamin. B12 is unique because it has a trace mineral, cobalt and hence the scientific name cobalamine and cobalt is found in the soil and if the soil is deficient which a lot of our soil today is from modern farming methods then there is no b12 without cobalt you cannot create b12 this is something which i'll talk about a bit later contrary to popular meat and dairy industry propaganda and well-meaning doctors you know, eating meat does not protect you from B12 deficiency. You know, eating meat, seafood, dairy and eggs does not at all protect you from B12 deficiency. The thing is, meat eaters have not been routinely tested like vegans. So all these deficiencies are going on, but they're not being tested for. So this is a really big problem. And just rest assured that you don't need to go back to eating your friends to get B12. This is just, you know, it's a terrible thing that people do because they're fearful and I understand that. But we need to educate ourselves on why we are B12 deficient before we go and make the biggest mistake of our lives and ruin the lives of innocent animals. You know, a recent Tufts University study in Boston actually found that 39% of Americans are B12 deficient and most of the people in the study had a low level of B12. You know the cutoff in other parts of the world is much higher than it is in America so if those people were tested in another country they would all be deficient. There's another study, a Framingham study that found that between the ages of 26 and 83, the people who were tested came up, 40% of them came up with a B12 deficiency. You know, and a deficiency low enough for them to experience neurological symptoms. You know, that's pretty serious. That's something you don't want to ignore. You don't want to be turning into, you know, going crazy and not realizing what the problem is when all along it's B12 deficiency. And Sometimes to the nerve tissue, to nerve cells, the damage can be irreversible. So I hear a few objections. Some of you are saying, oh, but those people, those tests were done on sad eaters, on people eating a standard American diet, or, you know, people eating lots of processed food. Okay, this is not helping the situation, but this is not the reason. You know, if it was the case, then my friends I have friends who eat raw meat, believe it or not. Yeah, you know, like we, we have some problems there but, and it's disgusting and I'm rarely around it, but that's another, that's another case. But anyway, they have B12 deficiencies themselves. And one of my friends in particular who's been eating raw meat for the part, raw, raw organic, you know, meat and dairy products for the past 10 years or so, actually got it, showed me his B12 tests the other day and he had 220 which is very low you know the cutoff in Japan is 500 
What may come as a shock to those of you who go back to eating animals, eating your friends as a source of B12 is that most people are ingesting enough of the vitamin but they're actually not absorbing it. Not only that, when you're cooking that heat sensitive vitamin, you're destroying you know, 80% of, or more of the vitamin. And this isn't given any attention at all because just about everybody eats cooked food, right? So that's something to think about. Also the fact that most people have digestive problems from eating such poor diets, you know, like Crohn's, celiac, IBS, they're all very common in this society. And you know, the most common over-the-counter drug is a digestive aid. So that just shows that we are really, really hammering our digestive system. It, it shows that we should change our diet, basically. But there are other factors which apply to myself because I'm eating a healthy diet and my digestion is really, really good. You know, flat stomach. <laughs> And it's, you know, it's flat all the time. I don't have any bloatedness. I don't have any backup like most people. But that's another video. <laughs> the thing is, uh, when I was younger, I had a lot of drugs, recreational drugs like ecstasy, cocaine, speed, marijuana. You know, it's all pretty sad, the amount of drugs that I had. And I did a lot of damage to my digestive system. You know, I feel like a lot of that has been reversed, but I don't know how much can be reversed, whether I've done irreversible damage. And that may be your case as well. You know, if you've had, um, you know, prescription drugs for years, that's really going to affect your ability to produce the intrinsic factor, which is vital if you want to absorb B12. There's also the fact that if you've been exposed to nitrous oxide during surgery, say dental or any other surgery, autoimmune disorders like pernicious anemia, there's, you know, there's plenty of things that we need to consider, like taking the contraceptive pill, which I did for seven years. This is another big depleter of B12 levels. And it also screws with your absorption. It doesn't matter how much is in your meat, dairy, seafood, eggs, whatever. If you don't have the intrinsic factor, then you're not going to be absorbing that B12. So in case you haven't noticed, we live in a sterile environment. You know, we wash and scrub everything to death. And you know, there's herb herbicides and fungicides and rodenticides, everything like that thrown around, which also destroys our good bacteria inside our guts. So we're destroying our ability to you know, create the intrinsic factor and absorb B12. And also, you know, we're not getting it from the fruits and veggies. We're not getting it off the dirt where we would have pulled it from the earth and got the dirt and the B12 with it. And that's another thing, you know, it brings me to the soil factor. You know, if our soil is deficient in cobalt, then B12 cannot come about because Cobalt is vital in the creation of B12. And about 60% of our soil has been depleted of cobalt due to modern farming methods like meat and dairy industry is famous for. Okay, so accurate testing. This is a really important one because Many doctors aren't trained sufficiently in B12 and the standard B12 test is a serum B12 test and it is not sufficient to rule out B12 deficiencies. You know, people go and get this test and they're like, oh yeah, I'm fine, and then they go off. But it's actually very, very dangerous. So the tests that are vital to rule out a B12 deficiency are urinary MMA, homocysteine levels, so if your homocysteine level is elevated that, then it's likely that you have a B12 deficiency and also the serum B12, so urinary MMA, serum B12 and homocysteine levels. So these are required to rule out B12 deficiency. You know there may be a little bit of cost involved but seriously if it means that you're going to get healthier then of course it's worth it. Okay, so that brings me to supplementation. You know, I used to be of the 
of the thought that, you know, I can't take supplements. You know, they're not pure, they're not natural. And I understand people feeling that way, but, you know, it's a purity mentality which can really get you into trouble. If you haven't noticed, we don't live in some fairy tale. We basically live in a toxic environment and we don't live how we're meant to. So what I do is I do my best in a world that is unhealthy. You know, if that means using supplementation, then I'm all for it. So I take shots. What I initially did was I took one shot a day for a week and then one shot a week for a month. And now just one shot a month. And the thing with B12 is that if you are deficient in that vitamin, then you won't be metabolizing fat as efficiently. And this is something that a few people notice, you know, if they're deficient in B12, then their fat burning capacity can come up when they get that, that need filled. So there's two types that I would recommend and that's a sublingual which goes under the tongue or a shot which is generally done into the intramuscular, into the shoulder. So just to finish, you know, I recommend that you get your B12 levels tested, the urinary MMA, homocysteine levels and serum B12 to be more accurate, you know, to rule out a B12 deficiency. Remember, meat will not give you B12. You know, it's not going to just all of a sudden you eat the meat and your B12 levels go up. It doesn't work like that. You know, there's a lot between that ingestion and the absorption, which I've already discussed. So rewind if you missed that bit. All right, well, I'll talk to you later.